to Woodside High School tonight, the Peninsula District Ladies Championship here, the tournament championship between the Mitchville Lady Monarchs and the Crabbers of Hampton. Let's send it courtside with Bob Hintz, who's got the Mitchville Monarchs coach, Aaron Webb. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, Aaron, first of all, congratulations getting here. Uh, you've been a thorn in, in Hampton's high side this year. You've done a good job. Tell me a little bit about your team. Well, our team is uh, really a mixture of uh, uh, some experienced um, senior classmen and a lot of energetic uh, underclassmen. Uh, 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 you know, we we played a lot of sophomore and freshmen this year. They brought a lot of energy. We got a lot of good talent came up from the JV program. We just had a really good balance, a good mixture of experience and youth. That's fantastic, yeah. Coach. I know you always like to see you got some some players coming up. Well, listen, good luck to you tonight. Okay, thank you very good much. Good enough. Appreciate Let's go back over to Mike. All right, thanks, Bob. Uh, in a couple seconds here, we'll have Brent with uh, Coach Eric Scott. Uh, tonight, the Peninsula District Girls uh, uh, Tournament Championship being held here at Woodside. And uh, what a venue they have here at Woodside. Wide open. Lots of folks can get in this place. So uh, we're going to have the boys game later on tonight, too, and then uh, expect it to be a full house. So as we get set here, let's send it back down courtside again where uh, Brent Musgrove has the Lady Crabbers coach, Eric Scott, courtside. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Eric Scott of the Lady Crabbers. Great year, co-champions in the district, here for the district champion, the tournament championship tonight. You've had a good year. Are the girls let down or are they up right now for this tournament? They, actually, right now, they feel they're up right now. They want a chance to do something that we didn't get a chance to do a couple years, win this tournament. Okay, well, I'm going to keep this short because of, of the presentation we got going tonight. But what I want to ask you, we've talked about a lot of seniors during the course, but I want to talk about this 6'1 freshman you've got, Brown. Uh, Jaqu I can't say her first name. Uh, Jaquasia. I've kept trying to pronounce it That's all afternoon. Right. Tell us a little bit about her because you're going to be losing some key seniors, and this 6'1 looks good. Yeah, we expect her to have a really good summer. We Hopefully that she's going to play AAU this summer, play on the uh, 15 and under team, kind of play up, play with some older girls that come back and uh, – come back and be ready to go to the next season. Well, Coach, I'm going to cut this short, but I want to thank you for all the Hampton City Schools is who we work for for getting us here tonight. We're looking forward to continuing on after this, Coach. Good luck. Thanks. Right, thank for everybody you. out there, I know they feel the same way. All right, thank you. All right guys, back to you. Thanks, Coach. All right, Bob, as we sit here now, we'll listen to the playing of the National Anthem. upholding high standards of good sportsmanship. Good sportsmanship is a key element to any athletics contest and everyone's conduct during the game or match can add to the enjoyment of the highest positive atmosphere for all involved. Your confident all will show their appreciation by exhibiting good sportsmanship. And now the starting lineups for the Mitchville Monarchs. First up we have number three, Ashley Cunningham. The next starter will be number 10, Naima Harrington. Also starting number 14, Bridget Brittany Hodges. Also starting number 23, Deshara Boone. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Monarchs, number 44, Sandra Morgan. And now the starting lineups for Hampton. First up, we have number 5, Candace Brown. Next starter will be number 12, Debbie Smith. Also 
starting number 20, Kenya Sears. Also starting to be number 23, Jaquia Character. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Crabbers, number 25, Jaquisha Brown. It's going to be a good uh, contest tonight. Uh, Benchville has beat these Crabbers in twice. twice. Hampton the, had Hampton, to win the playoff yeah. game to get the number one seed. So we look forward to this one to be a, a pretty good game. Uh, guys, Minchville, they, they're big. They have, they have some, uh, uh, some height, and, and they are uh, extremely well coached. Uh, I mean, you're talking about they have, play, they have one, two, three, four. They have, what, five players on their roster that are six foot and taller. Here are the officials for tonight, Cindy uh, Chesley, and he, she's the referee. Colleen Sullivan and uh, Sean Whitfield is the umpires for tonight's game here at Woodside, the district championship game for the ladies. Both teams uh, are co-champions during the regular season. Hampton, by virtue of the playoff win, ends up being the number one seed, and they uh, both of these teams will host first-round contests Monday in the Eastern Region Tournament. Taking the tip off for Mitchell will be number 44, Cassandra Morgan, and tipping off for the Hampton Crabbers. Well, as we get ready to get started here, it looks like the Crabbers number 25, Brown, will be center, and tip goes to the Crabbers. And a quick basket by Kanita Sears off the tip off. Crabbers jump out two to nothing. Well, they're going to come out and they're going to press full court doing a 2-2-1 uh, two -two zone trap. On that tip ball, Mentrill doesn't give up many tip balls, the jump balls, and they thought they had that one. Nice shot. Three pointer well, by number three, Ashley Cunningham. Cunningham. Well, they let her set up and take her time on that shot. Uh, nobody yeah. on, her, on her at all that time. You can't leave somebody that far out there. That's sweet of shot, I'll tell you. And it's Brown out here at the uh, point. Now hands the ball off to the Crabbers, Canada Sears. See, they got somebody shadowing the whole time, Smith. See that? Nice drive to the basket, just a bit off hard. Nice rebound by the Crabbers, and there's Smith. Nice pass off underneath. What they call? I'm not sure what they call. Maybe it was a three. Call. Oh. What was the call? Either way, it's a turnover on the Crabbers. I don't understand. She got the rebound and dribble. It was the official outside that. Uh, Made the call, and there's a drive to the hole by. Not too deep. Candace yeah. Brown's a little too hard on the off the rim. Well, didn't get up high enough. She had a wide open player. Uh, you got to use the got to use your left hand, Brent. Not only that, but she had a wide open player coming the other side. She never looked. Nice defensive play, and another walk Candace call this violation. time on Candace Brown. Well, so far, that's the popular call of the night. Yep. Popular call. Well. I couldn't say I'm gonna have to watch more on the screen. I got got more equipment in front of me. That, that one might have been a little premature because she did put the ball down and dribble it. But either way, she called traveling. Grab her second turnover here early. Three to two, Minchville out in front. I'd like to say uh, this is a wonderful facility for a uh, basketball tournament traveling. on this side of the water. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to see traveling called a few times. That's the third traveling call that we've had already in this less than two minutes. We're going to have to book tickets somewhere if they're going to keep all this up. <laughs> don't forget to pack your bags, too, okay? I don't stay that long anymore. Another turnover. This is not a good pass That's uh, three turnovers now on Candace Brown, by the way, guys. Throw the ball away and the nerves, come folks. back. Just playing for the tournament championship. A little bit of nerves. Nice basket. And the basket counts. Candace Brown with the drive and the basket. The foul number 14, Brittany Hodges. Brittany Hodges for the foul as Candace Brown will go to the line for the uh, three-point play. Just a much spacious, more spacious looking gym on this side, anybody, Mike? It just uh, well, this this is um, it's identical to Heritage. Her yeah, Heritage and, and uh, uh, Woodside were both built pretty much the same time, and they were, they're both mirror images of each other. Travers four to three lead uh, here with 5:45 to go in the opening period. The district championship game here being played as the Lady Travers, the number one seed, take on number two seed, 
and co-champions during the regular season, the Lady Monarchs from Minchville. That's a taking us right into it. That's what they want to do. That's going to put Gaquisha uh, Brown to the line. She'll be shooting two. They're going to have to do that. They're not going to let the, the other young lady get the ball at all. They're going to deny the ball into her hand. Well, I'm going to tell you, she reminds me a little bit of uh, the big girl for Kickatan. Uh, we oh, talked yeah. 20, number 20 over at Kickatan, both freshmen. Great, great. Great. Foul on the play was uh, Cassandra Morgan of the Minchville Monarchs. Two team fouls now against Minchville. Got to, to work on the free throws a little you bit. Got to get those free throws. Nice block that time uh, yes, by Brown. Uh, the Crabbers' future ball. center for uh, for Hampton. Definitely got to repel it in there. Yeah. Folks. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my house. Oh. Had a five-second call there. Nice pickoff. Going oh, all night nice to Use that hole. left hand. Yes, she did. Yes, sir. Debbie Smith with her bas first basket. Six to three now. Hampton out in front. Good defense so far, setting up uh, for the Crabbers. Crabbers are staying in position to have a second person on a on a drive. If you watch, see somebody back near the. See, see, see the big girl move into position. Now screen out. Nice work. Debbie Smith on the, the rebound for the Crabbers. Going to take it all the way in and score. There you yes, go. Sir. Another left hand. You got to love that. That's great. Young lady that averaged over 20 points a game for the season for the Crabbers. That's a double dribble, gentlemen. Time out. Baseball. And she got away with it. Uh, Dribbled the ball and then <laughs> brought the, the ball out. in and tried to split the, the Crabbers' defense and put the ball back on the ground. And, and uh, the timeout was called by uh, Aaron Webb of the Monarchs. Uh, with 4.35 to go in the opening period, Crabbers jump out to an 8-3 to three lead. And a very solid defense so far for well, Hampton Crabbers. What I'm impressed with is when the Crabbers are getting the rebound, they are attacking the, the offensive it end. They are going down the court, and if it's an open lane, uh, Debbie Smith did it twice. She's got two layups. She's not afraid to use that left hand, Brown and that's what you got to concentrate on. Brown went for a layup one time, too. So, like you say, they're kicking it out when they get in the rebound. And Minfield's not getting many second shots. I can tell you that. Debbie Smith, the uh, consensus player of the year, as uh, everybody seems to think when the voting comes out, she will. It's dominant for McDonald's All-American. That's right. Uh, another crabber on the men, too, also was nominated for uh, the. Was that not a double dribble? Uh, <laughs> Look like it to me. But she never moved her pivot foot. Come on, official, don't get too quick there. Ball. She's got to move the pivot foot to be a travel, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, that's <laughs> what I was taught my kids when I was coaching. Guys, you know. that's, that referee has called four travels already. Five seconds almost. Yeah. Nice drive to the hole by the Monarchs. Well, nice left job a little by bit the short. Nice job by the Crabbers uh, nice. forcing the pace of the ball. And that was a good, good thought to get that ball down the court. Candace Brown trying it. to force the ball into Debbie Smith. It was uh, knocked out of bounds by the Monarchs. Travers maintained possession. Nice block. Nice block. Right there. A good block. You got to use your body to protect that ball, and yep. she didn't do it that time, but she'll learn. Well, she took it one step too close. Well, they let her have that shot before. They let her Got set up again. ahead. That's her second That's three. And she's the only one to score points for the uh, Monarch so far. Eight to six is the score. Crabbers out in front by two. Had two set shots, and she's canned them both. Nice work. It was a good rebound. Offside rebound. We talked about that before, yeah. Brent. The key to character on the basket for the Crabbers extends that lead now to four. Hampton goes straight into a, a half-court prep. Well, pick him up, three-quarter court. Now can they get back? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd sure keep my eye on number three. She got the ball. I'd put somebody on her. You're where Debbie Smith set. is now, don't you? Good work. Oh. Clearing out underneath the basket there, fellas. And they're missing, what they miss, four layups? Yeah. Candace Brown takes the ball, drives and pulls good, it back. Good, good thinking. Just that back was a good back. move. Yep, she backed it out. She, 
Mitchville beat Hampton down court, and she just backed it out to start her over. Mitchville got three offensive rebounds down at this end and never did convert. Not a good pass. Oh. That was offense. That was a good call. She hooked her. That's going to be called on you Candace got a, Brown. You got that on replay. You'll see yeah, she, she used her offhand to, to hook her. First foul on the Crabbers. Watch it right here. She'll get the ball. Oh, no. Here's where she gets the ball. And she comes up and gets the ball right here. Yep, see, right there. Right there. Yep. Use that offhand. Nice move. It is a foul on the shot attempt. It wasn't a shot attempt. She just came down with the ball. <laughs> she just came down with it. Kenyatta Sears on the foul. Her first you think that's what's going to happen. That's what you call. To the line for the mark. 44 to Sandra Morgan. She, she was coming down with the ball, I thought. Sandra Morgan shooting two, makes the first Checking one. Checking in for Mitchell, number four, Paris Fields. Paris Fields for the Monarchs in now, number four. Good Rims screen out. Back Good screen out. Down the court, the Crabbers come. Nice pull up by Debbie Smith. Left it just a bit short, though. You got to use that left hand. That's twice she has missed a shot. Got too close to the basket. Got too and deep. put it up there with the right hand. Got too deep. And Candy Brown picks up her second foul, too. A little bit of frustration after missing the layup. Into the Crabber is Yashia Brown. The starting center is back in the game now for the Crabbers. 10 to 7 is the score. We've got a minute and 55 to go in the first quarter of play. Well, that was a carry right there. Bound in for the Crabbers that time is uh, LaQuisha character. Oh, Debbie nice Smith. play. Use that Smith. basketball. Yes, sir. Use that board as a protector. Yep. Oh, that was a carry. <laughs> Step up one more step, Debbie. Make her start counting. God made her fade away, and there's three crabbers under the board. Give Mitchell credit, they're getting back quick. They are, well, they better get back quick because they, they haven't, and two times, two, three times. Got much times time here. That's what I'm saying. You don't have much time. You can't. I think the coach was a little frustrated with too much time taken yeah. up here. Well, the time out by she the was getting a five-second count, and she, I don't think she was aware of it. Well, 49 seconds ago in the, in the first half, but he was looking at a five-second count. Yeah, that's what, that's what he, what he was trying timeout. to avoid. 49 seconds to go in the quarter, and it's 12 to 7. The Crabbers out in front. Here in the uh, Peninsula District Championship game being played in uh, on a Friday evening. Nice weather today as the weather has finally cleared out a bit here. And uh, while well, we're going to talk about it, what's the date, Mike? Today is 19th. February the 19th, 2010. <laughs> there you go. We will be giving the Hampton players uh, player of the game T-shirts again, sponsored by Tidewater Team Sports at the end of this game. Uh, of course, they're located in Oyster Point. Dave Chubb and Tara McNamara. We'll talk about more about them later. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're, that's right. The guys back in the background is hollering. They're playing the box and one. That's exactly what they're doing. Somebody, they have somebody mirroring uh, Debbie Smith the entire time. Otherwise, they're playing his own. Hampton's got some size on the inside back there. Yeah, they do. This is to their advantage. It's 20 some seconds to go. They don't take it down to four and five before you put the shot up. And that's what they're doing. They're pulling it out and they're going to go for the last shot of the quarter. Well, I think they need to start at about eight or nine for that sure. yeah, Right now, right they now. need to go. Right. Take a shot. Hey. 
Well, that was two, they got two, two, two tries at it. So and and missing four. a lot of layups. So I'm telling you, they could so be up and have 18 points right now. That's three layups. But at the end of the have. first uh, quarter play, the Crabbers lead 12 to 7 here. Peninsula and, District Championship. And there's Look our girl that. Susan up in the uh, way up in the Raptors up there. I'm telling you what, they've got to follow flight plan to get those cameras up there that high. While we got the chance to talk about it, let's talk about our crew a little bit. We got Nate Braxton, Susan Bowers, Gene Wheeler, and Steve Fry on camera. Graphics and animation, Andy Foley. Slow motion instant replay, Mike Nuenski. Camera control operator, Renee Camden. Production and audio assistance, Renee Camden. Audio engineer, Don Shirouse. And director and producer, Scotty Bowers. I'm Brent Musgrove here with Mike Hauser and Bob Hintz at Woodside High on February the 19th. I thought you was going to talk about them. Uh, no, I, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the people that know them. The only one he's going to talk about is A. Foley. Andy, Andy, Andy. Andy's an under, undercover the, the, the inspector. The green dot guy. Yes, he is. Um, Andy's the undercover inspector. Yeah. yeah we go different places. He, he will already done an inspection somewhere and let us know the <laughs> mission of the so the uh, Midfield Monarchs will have the ball quarter. to begin the second yes. quarter of play as they trail the Crabbers 12-7. to seven. Out of bounds on the crab. Got to tell you what I like right there. The big girl went right down to the floor to fight for that ball. Don't be afraid to go down and get the ball. No, I mean. Nice set job by nice number 23 to share yeah. Boone. And that's three threes. Three, so they've got one free all throw. their baskets they've got off of three pointers and they got one foul shot. Heavy Smith. Nice, sweet Smith. jump shot. Smith. Oh, my sweet. heavens. Sweet. Eight, eight points here already for Debbie Smith in the uh, first half. He has just got a nice touch on the ball. Another three point. This one was a bomb. She got it up there. Yep. It was a satellite shot. It come down wet. <laughs> Big shot. Oh, that's a little ticky tack right there, folks. Uh, I don't understand why the referee standing underneath the basket is making a call, and there's a gentleman running down the court that's standing right next to him and doesn't Four feet away. Exactly. And this guy's standing there. Standing there looking right at both of them and didn't call it, and the one behind the basket does. She didn't get an advantage, and that's when you call the foul when the other one player gets an advantage. Good hustle. Good Who did hustle. they charge that foul to? Did you happen to see? Was it yeah, it was, yeah, it was uh, number 12 for the Crabbers. Debbie Smith? Debbie yeah. Smith? Was it Debbie? I thought it was 20. We'll have to see if we got it on tape. Well, it threw uh, that one right away. Yes. I mean, it threw that one right into the Minshew player's arms. Oh, nice pass underneath. Yep. Wide open. Paris Fields. Nobody looked basket. out, looked backside. Not at all. Three defenders went with the ball. Mitchell in a zone now. Like a 1-3-1, one, one, Bob. Well, Hamp actually, that's Hampton's running that box in one is what they're doing. That's Hampton's first three right there. Good well, defense. Nice defense. Number 12 drive straight to the hole. No, 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 the no, no. You, that's your call. That is not your call. That's a call underneath the basket. The you cannot charged. make number a charging call from that personnel. point. Now they don't see this. Watch Team it. Team foul number four. Checking into the game for the Crabbers, number 14. Brittany Towns. There's a fisher right underneath the basket saying nothing. For Trina Platt. Harrington now will shoot for the three-point play as the uh, Monarchs have come back and tied this up 14-14. Well, the boxing one is uh, working for Mitchell right now. Slow them down a little bit because they don't know what to do with that four, uh, four that person box. zone is what they're doing. Well, now they're just all in. It's in a zone. They're not looking at the. Uh, 
Oh, Girl's on. got to learn. She's a kickout player. She's got to take uh, that shot or give it up. I'll tell you what. Don't fake with the ball. Because yeah. if you fake with it, you're, you're going to get called traveling. Yeah, you're traveling. Yeah. And and they do not. Uh, there's no way that they're looking at the feet. Same officials called traveling five times so far. <laughs> Made a call of the night. slowing down now, this is a three-point shooter right here yeah. that was a foul over the back on smith and she didn't get the call nice drive to the hole oh, just a little yeah, too that's hard that's off okay. the board. <coughs> i know she wanted that three-point play if yeah, she did that Paris Fields on the foul four Paris fields that'll put debbie first smith first. to the line she'll be shooting Team too to the line for the Crabbers, number 12, Debbie Smith. A few folks watching this game Tuesday night at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. It'll also be shown Wednesday, February the 24th at 9.30 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Thursday the 25th at 8 p.m. 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And Friday, February the 22nd at 9.30 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Tied up now as Debbie Smith just puts the Crabbers back out in front. That's point number 10 now for for Smith here in the first half. She's got she's 10 lead, of the 16 points. She leads all scores. She's a district leading scorer and the Crabber scores number one player. They're wide open. Heavy Smith Debbie on Smith the rebound. rebound. And then she throws it away. Coming into the game for the Mitchville, number 14. Coming into the game for the Mitchville Monarchs, number 14, Brittany Hyde. That would have had to be a perfect pass. Yes, it would. And the, and, the, and the person on the other end would have had to have the head up a little bit quicker. 4.17 to go here in the second quarter. Crabber's up by one, 16-15. Well, that's what we thought. These Medfield has beat Hampton twice this year, and then in the playoff of the number one spot in the tournament, Hampton came back and beat Mitchville. So uh, these two and teams. Pretty the, handily, too, in that game. Yeah. And uh, Mitchville won both games during the regular season by three points both times. That's it, they can't hurt you out there. Mentrell is very patient. Yep, they're, they're trying to run some baseline stuff, some cross stuff on the baseline. Oh, come on. There's a blocking foul on the play. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Coach Webb charged, before I interviewed, and his son played basketball foul. over at Bethel High Team School. Foul now uh, in pre-med up at uh, UVA. Let's and watch. he came down here and worked with these girls in Benchville and wants to be a coach too, even though he's in pre-med. I think he'd make more money in pre-med than he will coaching. But. Good hustle. Get it back to Smith to bring it up court. This is the way when you're playing that box in one, the, it kind of negates it, Bob, because that defender has already got to be on her because she's got the ball. Yeah. She can't deny her that way. It looks like they've dropped out of it and back into a 1-3-1 one, one almost, 1-2-2. One, two, two. It's a 1-2-2, two, two, yes. Oh, come on, you got to watch the ball in. That's two, that's two passes she's missed. She's got to watch that ball in. She took that step before the ball went down. He's consistent. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> and that calls well, him that, to... that official over there is the one that called the first four. First five. Well, it wasn't, it's not her turn anymore. It's not her turn. Huh? It's not her turn oh, okay. anymore. She already got her four in the oh, okay. first half. That's a long three-pointer by Smith. Number 10 on the basket, the Harrington. The defender should have stopped on that instead of running on out of bounds. Five points now for Harrington. But as for Hampton, when Debbie took that shot, there's... Oh, oh come on! <laughs> what is she doing? That ball went to the floor. 
That's the sixth time she's called a travel when the ball's going to the floor. Not only is it going to the floor, but she's being hammered on the side by one of the defending players, and, and the, the, cut, the foul ain't being called. I just don't understand this. Well, that's that's. I haven't I haven't been keeping a record of walks so far being called in this game, but I guarantee you it's close to ten. Seventeen to sixteen, Minchville out in front with a minute and forty-five to go. Smith to the hole is a little short again. This one's knocked out of bounds by Minchville Hampton ball now, under the basket. What, they're getting hit in there a lot. Uh, the, I guess the one. There's, I, there's some contact. They're not going to call the, the contact fouls, but they will call the traveling. Parameter stuff seems to be the thing to call. My nice Lord. block. Good block. She lost the ball. Yeah, she yep. did. But that was the same move she got called for walking the last possession when she put the ball down on the floor and went to the right. Yeah, that's it. Nice <laughs> <laughs> shot by the big girl. Sandra Morgan. A three point lead. Yep. Sandra yep. Morgan, that's uh, her first basket. Uh, that gives her three points now here in the first half. Travers now trailing by three. Debbie Smith to the hole, off balance and off the rim. And there's a foul on the shot. The rebound by. Uh, Trisha Brown, she will go to the line and shoot two. Well, she got that ball. She went right up with it. She didn't put it on the right. ground, didn't try to do anything. Went right up to the basket with it. That was what you want to do. Now she's got to learn to make these free throws. She's, she's got to work them. on. She's got to she's, she's just take, take her work. time. There you go. Well, that was a better stroke. Well, her finishes are not till after the ball is going. She's, she's not getting the ball up high enough. Soft enough is the right yeah, word. The ball looks like it's a little into the palm of her hand. Yep. But this is going to come with time. She's going to she's going to learn. This is where she's going to make a lot of her points when she gets this down. Yeah, she almost she, looks like she's shot putting it instead yeah. of shooting it. You know yeah, what I mean? She's, she's pushing. Now, I don't it understand what happened on that shot. The girl got the rebound and just threw it. Into the Crabbers Vincent. now 34. Ashley Winston. I don't even have 34 on here. That's Ashley Vincent. She's 34. See, we had her as yeah. 32, so it's 34. Off. You didn't touch a thing. They're just yeah, out rebounding Hampton now. Just out rebounding the Hampton right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll Morgan down. for her second basket in a row now. 21-16. Took the big girl out of the game. She's not blocking anybody out. Hamp I don't have to play for the last shot down by five. And they're going to jump her with about 10 seconds. That's what I do. I send two defenders right out. Right now. I'd send two defenders out there right now on her. Nice drive. <laughs> Debbie Smith hits another basket, and that brings Nobody's the Crabbers to within three. Ooh, that was almost that it. Was there. You got the square. Score. So at the half, well, the Mitchell Monarchs lead the Hampton Crabbers by a score of 21 to 18. That was a back and forth first half, guys, and uh, we'll look forward to. Hampton's got 178 now. <laughs> <laughs> look forward to the second half action here as uh, the Crabbers trail. Slow, by three. Slow pace game. A uh, couple really scores and uh, everybody else is grabbing. A lot of rebounding. So we'll just see how it goes in the second half because uh, one thing for sure, you can't travel out here. Don't book <laughs> any trips. Don't let, don't go for any cruises because uh, that seems to be the call of the night. Yeah, so I far. don't know what the rebounds are, but the, the uh, Mentor Monarchs are just out rebound. They got two that, or three offensive rebounds down there just ready to go. Yeah. And they have all along. They're getting good position blocking out the Crabbers and making some good points because of that. All right, so at the half, 21 to 18, Mitchville leads the Hampton Crabbers. Stay tuned for second half action as we will return to Woodside High School shortly. Well, welcome back here to Woodside, guys, and uh, all you folks out 
TV land watching us tonight. 21-18 uh, as the Minchville Monarchs lead the Hampton Crabs at the half. Bob? Well, Hampton started out like they were going to you know, make this a pretty good game, and then uh, Minchville went into a zone and kind of took Hampton out of their running game. Well, I tell you what, Hampton is to penetrate. And they were not penetrating. Oh, they were penetrating against the man to man, but the zone takes that penetration away from me. If it wasn't for Debbie Smith, Hampton would really be hurting right now. Yeah. She's really been the one that, that has carried this team. She has taken the ball down. She's been very aggressive offensively. Well, I, I, I would like to see what this game would be if they didn't call all these traveling calls because yeah. there were a lot of times that, that these young ladies were making a move to the basket so well, scoring in the first half Debbie Smith led all scores she had 12 two each for Candace Brown Kanita Sears and a yeah, character those were the only scores for the crabbers so basically most of the scoring came from Debbie Smith over on the Minchville side a little bit more evened up their leading score was six point Ashley Cunningham and five each for uh, Namaya Harrington and Cassandra Morgan and three for Tashira Boone and two points for Paris Fields. Cravers trail as we get ready to start the third quarter play by five or by three, 21 to 18. Well, the Cravers will have the ball to start this uh, second half. The possession arrow is in their favor. Uh, gee, I'm picking up a lot of, lot of noise. Got an awful wow. loud all of a sudden. Yeah, it got real loud, but now I'm okay. You all right now? Yeah, I'm fine now. Cool. I just got my sinuses cleaned out. <laughs> So the Crabbers, uh, Debbie Smith heading over towards our table as uh, she will be inbounding the ball here on the near side. Got a pretty good first half. She had a lot of lot of uh, shots underneath the basket that she had a couple of jumpers over just as pretty as you could ever want to see. Yes, well, she did. I'm impressed with her when she gets some rebounds. She just turns and goes right down the court. She's, she's had to have at least three or four rebounds. Well, that whistle was loud. It was. Well, it's sitting right in front of our microphone here too. Is that what it was? Right here. Okay. The sinuses are really cleaned out. Looks like Metfield's going to jump them. She's trying to step through. I don't know where she was going to go with the ball. She just yeah. took herself right in trouble. The Crabbers had nine turnovers in the first half. Minchville had six. Got to give Minchville credit. They came right out and jumped in it. Well, jump ball, and that will possession will stay with Minchville. Down underneath their well, own. I got to see that. Lady got hit in the uh, hit in the nose. Yeah, she got an elbow, and I'm telling you, it's a little bit character. more a little bit more physical than uh, the official called it. Now she's asking if she's all right. No, you didn't blow the whistle for the foul. I'm not all right. Out yeah, the sudden. smallest girl on the court got the rebound. Nobody's on that boxing one. out. Out Come of on, bounds guys. on the rebound. She, she came Hampton. from the corner. A 23 for Hampton. She and got her. Just, just forgot about her. She walked in there. Ball went right to her. The Minchville opens up with a full court press. They're grabbing her arm, but we're not going to call a foul. What are you throwing the ball? Where were you throwing that ball? Nice basket by number 10, Harrington. That is her seventh point of the game now. Well, they open up a five-point lead from the three-point, and Hampton's turned the ball over a couple of times already. And not getting any second shots. Uh, one and done, and then they're running. Good block. Nice Go. block on the play by Debbie well, Smith. As not she was the trailing... Uh, Defensive player. Nice shot. Well, I don't know that that was, on the basket. That was one I wouldn't advise you to do because you was that number three to one. Well, the difference is, is that went in the hole. Yep. <laughs> Got the two one. points. So the crab is still. Say, no, no, no. Good uh, shot. Yeah. No, no, don't shoot. Oh, okay. Nice job. Trail by three again. Uh, 23 to 20 now. With 619 to go here in the third. Matchfield is spreading Hampton out a little bit here on offense. That's what they're trying to do. Well, they really opened up the lanes that they can drive. Push off oh, on the play. Yeah. Offensive foul, foul called on Brittany Hodges. That's her third. That's that for Metro. Three on her? Yep. The offensive foul will be charged number 14, Brittany Hodges, with a first of all, team foul number one. That's the shot if you can make it. 
Nice rebound underneath and a block underneath there. Now the rebound it and puts and it she in. Put it right 25. back in, stayed with it. Yes, she did. Keisha Brown, that's her first basket underneath the hole there for the Crabbers as they now trail by one, 23 to 22, with 5.42 to go in the third. February the 19th, 2010, here at War uh, Woodside High School, and this is the girls' Peninsula District Championship game. Finish the shots. Got to finish the shot. That is off of uh, Brown's knee. She gets real two. close to the basket. And she doesn't use a glass that much. She needs to learn to use that glass. It's amazing what that box above it will do for you. Coming in for the Crabbers, number 34, Ashley Vinston, and she will take the place of Lakia character. She got hit in the nose down here about three minutes yeah, ago. She did. She's still holding it, yeah. too. She got nailed. 5-12 to go in the third. We're about three minutes into the quarter now. Bill has scored two points in this quarter. Travers have scored four. Nice shot. Instant on the rebound for the Cravers. Uh, officials time out here. Looks like we have a player that has a, an injury, so we'll Wait while they take care of that. Uh, well, is it an official's timeout? I'm not sure. Nobody signaled whether it's yeah, a 30 the, second the, or the 60 second. The players, the players got a, a cut on her hand or something. I think that's what she went over there for. Well, that's why I'm questioning. Well, don't you replace her? The, the player goes uh, her off her and they is, bring somebody else. Yeah, her, no, her nose is bleeding. They need to be uh, bringing somebody else back that's in. That's what the game I'm saying. You, they're getting a timeout out of this. You bring somebody else in. Both of them are. So the Crabbers are over there huddled around the uh, Eric Scott, the coach. And, You don't let it become a timeout. What you do is stop play, escort the young lady over there, to her get bench. a substitute, come back and play the game. Yep. Everybody stays where they are or it stays out on the floor. Coming back in with a shooter. Number three back in the game, Ashley Cunningham for Mitchville. She's got she two three-pointers. Yep. First six points for Mitchville in the first quarter. The first three baskets that Minchville scored was uh, oh, for three pointers. Another turnover by the Crabbers. Walk in is the call. Well, and sometimes you have uh, extra weight on you and yeah. push you down. Somebody on your shoulder that makes it hard oh. to stand up. Well, we'll call that traveling. We haven't called That's that. That's what tonight. the official called it. Yep. We, he hasn't done it much tonight. So no, he hasn't. No, uh uh. <laughs> There's a walk. Hey, 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 hey. Call is against the Crabbers. Looks like number 12. That's Debbie Smith. Now we've got another official that just decided to get involved all of a sudden. He's made the last four calls. Smith gets her first foul of the uh, of the game. Go to the line to Does shoot two. Like we're on the official's case. No, Deshier Boone not. will shoot two. Well, I think a lot of that has to deal with the fact that there was about four or five walking calls called against the Crabbers in the first quarter, and uh, no fouls were called. In, you know, a lot of times you got you got young ladies that are getting uh, pushed around, and, and that's what causes the, the the walk, and it's not being called. And it kind of gets real frustrating, I guess. Almost threw it away, and uh, luckily for the Crabbers, it yep. was knocked out of bounds by Morgan, number 44, for the The bad Monarchs. pass. Yep. Just a bad pass. Smart play by, uh, yeah. by <laughs> Sears stopping that uh, momentum going across half court. Debbie Smith on the drive. Nice pass off. Uh, they're going to call the defensive foul prior to the pass. So no basket. That was a great pass. Yes, it was. I thought she was going to call traveling. I have to be honest with you, folks. <laughs> like the sheer of Boone is on the uh, foul. That's her first. That's a good call. Yeah. Give them props when they make a decent call, guys. Uh, that was a good call. When all of a sudden you get to be a nice guy. This, this <laughs> happened in the last three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice play, but it just doesn't fall for him. That's okay. That's that's aggressive to the basket. Put the pressure on the defense. That's, that's exactly right. what uh, Debbie Smith did. What I like about her is she has a lot of control no matter what her body position is. That was called on Harrington. That's her first. Debbie Smith to the line to shoot two. 
She's almost money there, guys. Yep. 13 okay. points now in the game as she leads all scores. Pulls the Crabbers to within a point, 24-23, as she attempts to tie it up here. Doesn't get the bounce. Lynchville's wanting to score. Whoa, 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 whoa. Arrington on the. Uh, uh, what happened to the travel? What happened? And the walk in the basket. I guess they canceled <laughs> it the second half. <laughs> oh, come on now. She's. Forcing the issue here, yeah. gentlemen. I don't know. You're going to hop, skip, and jump without a travel. <laughs> but that's. And that's in track. They yeah, have a hop, skip, and jump. Or they now call it. Oh, uh, the triple jump. Triple jump, yeah. Brown on the rebound. And again, no foul. And here comes Debbie Smith down the uh, far side of the court. It's a way to pull it back and take time. Yeah, but she should have immediately penetrated. She was one-on-one, -on -one and everybody was back on the baseline. Going to be a five-second call here. Somebody set a pick, folks. But nobody's they're, coming up to set anything with They're her. letting Debbie Smith kind of isolate out here on her own as she drives to the hole and is fouled as she takes the shot. It is a foul. It looks like it's going to be against number 44, and it is. That is uh, Cassandra Morgan, her second. So Debbie Smith will go back to the line. She'll be shooting two again. Currently three of four at the line. Well, again, let's say it again tonight. We're going to be awarding a T-shirt to the Hampton School with the most valuable player, and that shirt's going to be provided by Tidewater Team Sports, located at uh, 11839 Buchanan Boulevard, Oyster Point, Newport News. Uh, Dave Chubb and Terry McNamara there can help you with any of your needs for sporting apparel or embroidery or whatever it might be. So please uh, visit the people that support this program. Thank yeah, you so much. Down by one now is the Crabbers. 26-25. I guess he wants to count. Long three by number four. Oh, that was oh, bad. Yeah. And you see, that was money. And the defender never fought through the screen. She just stood there and let the screen take do what it was supposed to do. And that's oh. about four or five threes that the uh, four of them. Mentrell and the Crabbers have none. I think they've only taken one three. Well, and they've missed that. Here's that zone. It's just giving Hampton trouble. There's no offensive threat here. Four point Mitchville no. lead. It's not hard to defend this. And the. It's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. <laughs> That's all I can say. Maybe we can see it. See if the action is good. Twenty-nine, twenty-five. Mitchell out in front. Where's the five-second call, gentlemen? Uh, he, he stroked his hand. He stroked his hand about six times. <laughs> timeout is called by Mitchell. Twenty-second timeout, and that'll uh, stop the clock with a minute and fifty-two to go here in the third. Mitchell out by four. Well, I tell you, if I was uh, Eric Scott, I'd be coming frustrated. There had just been too many traveling calls. Well, I don't see the travel, but I see some contact. No contact, no foul. I'm interested to know if the guys down here taking the stats because they know how many walks have been called in this game. We know there were five in the first half by the same official. <laughs> and then the other official took over and started <laughs> yeah. making them. Uh, well, that was a popular call. Yep. Yeah. The call of the day. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Hampton is not uh, doing anything aggressively to break, to break that zone. You know what? When they go play over in the Eastern Region, they have the uh, South Side officials. They won't be calling walks nowhere near as much as this side does. That's a whole, a whole entirely different officiated yeah. game over there. What a nice, well, nice just, inbound but, play. But the thing of it was, the girl never had to break to get there. She was just, just standing there just from, the, from the beginning. Nobody picked her up. The defense left her. And nobody, and see what I'm talking about? Everybody's standing in this zone. Debbie she, Smith for three. She needs to hit them. <laughs> number 44 yeah, right over the on top. Finally, we're going to call some contact. That's number three on Morgan. 
So now yeah. they got two players with three fouls. What, what, what's your thinking about trying to get the ball inside and draw the fourth one? Would that make sense? Makes sense to me. That's the five, uh, 15 foul on the, the Monarchs, and there's only been one against the Crabbers so far. Well, Hampton's got to hit the baskets, guys, here. That's all there is to it. And right now they're struggling putting the ball in the hole. She is pushed off after the shot. Uh, way to go. That Debbie, that uh, Debbie, Debbie Smith, Smith on the rebound and a putback. Wide open. Well, everybody was up top here. Wide open. Nobody picked up the uh, young lady, the one that flashed in from the uh, left side. Boone on the basket for Minchville. Long and nothing. No iron. Got to stop the ball. Oh, nice play. Oh. Nice defensive play that time by Candace Brown forcing the ball, but unfortunately, she hustled down, got in front of the dribbler. Did a good job. You're right, Mike. Wait a minute. He gives the ball off to the player while they're having a discussion with the official. You can't, you can't just give the ball off to the player before it gets set. The officials weren't having a discussion. Oh, no, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> what a poor call. This is just getting worse as it goes along. It's getting worse as it goes along. Well, I'll tell you what, Eric, Eric Scott has definitely got a uh, uh, situation. I mean, they, they sit there and hand the ball off and play is not and, even and ready to be not, played. Yeah, two officials are not even in position. And you got another official over by the, uh, by the table letting a Minchville player come in on the floor yeah. as she's coming in off the sideline. Yeah. And now the one that let her in is saying, okay, we're going to give them the two well, points. Well, that doesn't make sense. If there were six players on the floor, there were six players on the floor when that basket was made. Watch this. If you're the referee, you can't let six players be on the floor. You just can't do it. But I guess you can if you can't control the game. <laughs> Good shot. Debbie Smith again. And right now, guys, Debbie Smith is the only thing that's working right now for the Crabbers. As they trail by six, 35 to 29. Yeah. Now, look at that force. 44 right over the top of the defensive player. And uh, the basket at the end of the quarter, the Crabbers trail by six, 35 to 29. And I tell you what, Eric Scott's got to be upset over this. Well, over what's I tell happening you, here. Absolutely. for a championship game and you don't have the top officials doing it, something is wrong with the Peninsula District Officials Appreciate, Association. I'm telling you, this is not a well officiated game at this point. You've really got isn't. two of the best teams on this side of the water, and you don't have officials that, that know what's going on. You cannot have six players on the on the floor, a player over a referee over there at the at the table bringing player in, and the guy hands the ball off and they get two points. Yeah, it's Give just me a break. Yep. Yeah, I think right now that uh, hoping the officials are working out the problems. You know, maybe we would have. Uh, there's our they, they, They're the problem. How do you work it out? Yeah. Well, they're going to get it calmed down. I'm hoping the fourth quarter, maybe things will get better. I've, I've got all the confidence in the world. That I'm just hoping. <laughs> well, here's one of the things that they, the Crabbers are going to have to do, guys. they got to get the ball to go through the basket, and uh, they're really struggling scoring points tonight. Yeah, the officials have got to get on the same page. It's what not. It's not the that? defensive pressure. I mean, they're they have they've been taking numerous shots underneath the basket, and they're just not hitting them. They're setting back in that zone. Good job, and finally got the, the foul. But the, and this is what Hampton's got to do. They're using. Yeah. They overload that time. Got the ball inside. Yep. Boone on the foul with the basket is Candace Brown. That's her uh, fourth point of the game, and she will go to the line for the three-point play. Hampton girls are usually good free throw shooters. This is where they've got to, to catch up and get well, make something happen. This young lady kind of offsets to the left. Yep. But it worked this time. That's All net that time. The Crabbers pulled it within three. 
Nice Still easily breaks the uh, oh, and it took it right out of her own player's hands. Travers on a two on three break. Nice pass underneath. Another one. Great job. Oh, the way to move the ball. Never Passing once put it on the ground. Padrina Platt on the basket. That's her first one for the Travers as they pulled it within one. 35-34. Hampton's showing a little pressure now. What? That's going to be called against Ashley Vinston, number 34. That's, that's her first. Not hurt you. That's only second team. That's foul. right. Yeah, but I mean, it's quick whistle for all the contact we've had inside. <laughs> now let's see if this handoff here. I know. Well, at least two of the three officials call a walk. <laughs> Travers have a chance now to take regain the lead. Well, I don't blame the girl for doing it. She no. did it one other time and got by with it. Uh, she's crickets. being too impatient yep. right there. Yeah. Coach too Scott's got to got to got to know that. Got to know that the player was too impatient and wanted to take a shot and he wasn't ready. Oh, what a block! Ball back. And Minchville uh, will get the ball back after uh, the Crabber foot was on it. the line. Yep. Well, that was a good hustle. Yeah. Timeout is called. Full timeout now called by the Minchville Monarchs with 6.39 to go here in the fourth quarter play. Back to a game. Minchville out in front by a point, 35 to 34. You got to like the way the Crabbers came out and started attacking that zone, they overloading it like we were talking about during the first half. Well, this is what they did to start the game off in the first quarter. They were very aggressive. Right, but they weren't playing. They were against the man-to-man. -man. Now against the zone, they, during the second quarter, they just kind of set back and didn't, didn't attack it. Right. Well, like you're supposed to do, you got to overload it where you got too many offensive players for the defense to match up with. 6.39 to go here in the fourth. Crabbers trail by one, 35-34 here at Woodside High School. This is the Peninsula District Girls Tournament Championship game on February the 19th, 2010. Code district champions during the regular season as the Lady Crabbers won a one game playoff to uh, gather in the number one seed and they will be the number one seed heading into the Eastern Region Tournament next week as Minchville will have the ball underneath their own basket. Left her girl. Left her wide open five, again. Number five. Shira Moore, Moore uh, Boone, that's her uh, second three. Good Lord. That's 11 points now Good for her. Good Lord. It's no ball. You got to see that. She just got knocked out of bounds. Watch this. She gets by. Just stepped right in. Mm. Travers have six turnovers here in the second half to Minchville's one. And. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. Well, the I don't think she touched the, the ball. Shirt. I don't think she did. She kept her hand straight up. I think the ball bounced off her body, and instead of going after it, she let it go. And she was standing right there in front of him. That's good defense right there. Well, they better pay because well, that's the play that they've run twice and got a layup off the inbounds play. Watch it. She, she didn't see her hands. It was on the screen. You didn't see yeah, her hands a, touch the ball. That's a push off there on the Minchville Monarch. I believe it's number 44. And That'll that, be her fourth. And that is and number one four. And one. Yeah. one and one. So uh, Hampton will go to the line now. They will be shooting one and one. Now they're not going to give it to her. That's not a player control foul. That was an one offensive. And one. one and one. One and one. Well, they're not going to give it to him. Well, there we go again, folks. That's what I was talking about. A oh, good job. 34 on time. Vincent, and that's her first basket. And the Crabbers trail by two, 38 to 36. Tried to force that a little bit. I think she was trying to pass it to somebody. Needs to come down here and maybe take the lead with this one a little bit off. Hampton players went. Well, they look like they're standing around and not a, not attacking the, the basketball. Vincent on a rebound. 
Passes the ball over to Candace Brown. Yeah. And when they're taking that, that long shot, it doesn't appear anybody's going to the boards. That's right. Got to get a little spring into that shot, folks. Nice the basket. Good, Good job drive. by Debbie Smith. Tie game, fellas. Debbie Smith. Smith with 21 points on the game, and she's almost got her uh, season average here. Tied up 38 all, 448 to go here in the fourth quarter. So that was a travel. What a block. Nice block that time. Here we go. Two on one, get it off, and they didn't. She just kicked, took it right in. Oh, nice play by yeah, Candace right. Brown. Grabbed that Candace ball. Brown. Took the rebound and scored, and the Crabbers back out in front, 40 to 38. Aggressiveness is definitely picked up now by the Crabbers here in the fourth quarter. Well, they trailed by five at the end of three, right? Now That's they're correct. up by two. Oh, nice defense. That's a good call, jump ball. Good defense by the Crabbers. Almost gets the turnover. Now let's see if they can handle the inbounds play. They've been scored on twice on the inbounds play with a layup. That's why a lot of coaches you'll see going to a zone on yeah. the inbounds underneath the basket. That was an offensive pick right there, and it uh, could very well have been a, a foul. Debbie Smith on the rebound. Pass is wide open to Candace Brown. We're shot a little bit too hard. Nobody followed. Mm. Ball goes out of bounds on the far side court, and it's uh, Minchville ball as they trail by 2, 40, 38, 354 to go here in the fourth quarter. That would have been a big three right there. She and that was not that. a bad shot. No, wide wasn't a bad open. shot. That's the kick out shot you were looking for. Hampton still hadn't made a three yet. Oh, nice block. block underneath it there by, uh, by Brown. Candace Brown on the rebound for the Crabbers as she brings the ball up for it. Benchfield's got a little cold spell going on right now. Make him come out of that zone. Right, Make him come like, out of that zone. Looks like Eric Scott has told him to pull him out. Oh, nice play if you can get it in there. Yes, Good sir. job. There you go. There you go. Jakeem and Parker called, and on the basket. Scott called a quick timeout right then, and he's telling them we got 3.15 to go. If they're going to stay in that zone, back it out. Take some time off that and clock. It, and I it think, worked. I think you're going to see Mitchfield come out in the press now. Oh, well, the got, press, is, the press is what changed the situation in the second quarter. Right. I think they're going, you're going to see him come out with some quickness. The biggest so the Crabbers up by four now, 42-38, 3.15 to go in regulation time. It's the fourth quarter. Oh, and, Scott's uh, got to be talking about to his huddle. He's got to be talking about look for that press and setting up some kind of way to break it. That's what he's doing. And, of course, well, they've had. And, and he's played. This is the fourth time he's that's played right. him, so he knows what kind of press they're going to throw that's at right. him. That's right. So they should have practiced this a few times before. I'm very surprised that he went away from that box and won. That was kind of effective for him there in that, that first uh, first half of play. Lynchville was, yes. Now they, they, well, but uh, Hampton started overloading on that one side and sunk a, sh a few buckets and got a little penetration. And that uh, brought him out of that. Twenty-one points to lead all scorers in the first. And they're going to the put pressure on them right from the get. I think they're going to run a uh, three-quarter press. Uh, they got to keep somebody back now. Debbie Smith for the Crabbers with twenty-one points. Got to keep somebody back. They just going full McCourt man to man, just token pressure. Nobody's nobody's back. Uh, nice pressure defense as she didn't allow her to get that shot off. And now you some, take your time. Take right. your time. Pull them out of the zone, and that's what they're doing. Yep, they're playing man to man. But somebody's got to be moving up here, folks, because it's going to be a five second call here. Straight to the basket. Oh, a little bit too hard. Two Hampton players fighting for the ball. And that's going to be a foul, I think, against yeah. Candace Brown. That's, that's okay. It's only yep. third team foul. Yeah, but it's two Hampton yep. players fighting for that ball. That's Brown's third foul for the Crabbers, so that's their third foul. They're a long ways away at this point from getting to a one and one, so that could be to their advantage here in the fourth. Absolutely. As long as they have the lead, it's to their advantage. 2.30 to go here in the fourth quarter, down by four to Mitchell Monarchs. Yeah. 
Don't she let her have that three wide open like that. Good job on the defense that time and the rebound by Kevin yeah, Shears. Take it, walk it up, take your time. A basket right here, guys, will be real big right now. All right, come. Aaron Webb, the coach from Mitchville, trying to get his players out there to get on the play, on the on the defense and. Right now, there, there's too much spread minutes, there, so this is definitely in the Hamptons' uh, hands here. Oh, the ball was stolen Good away defense. from Smith. And a foul on Debbie Smith, the and the basket will count for Harrington. And she put that ball out too far out in front of you. You'll see the steal. It was, it was clean. It was a nice it steal. It was a clean one, and here's the drive. But I wonder why Debbie Smith had to come all the way across from the other side to try to make the block when you had two Hampton Crabbers with their back to the ball going down, didn't know where the ball was. That's one point game. And now here comes Mitchfield with a press. Can't handle it. All right, the Crabbers call. call timeout. A minute and 43 to go as they lead and have the ball by a score of 42-41. Had a four-point lead, and then you give up that three-pointer. Now, on a turnover, I mean, the, their best player had the ball in their hand. But I, as we've seen, when you try to take time off the clock, they've got one person up top, and they've got the two other guards all the way down in the corner instead of coming up where an easy outlet pass right. to the other guard. Great crowd out here tonight, Bob. I see a few empty seats up top, but probably hey. half the people here can't walk that far up. <laughs> uh, and it, I've looked and, on, the, and the other half did a nosebleed. Yeah, well, I've looked on both sides for an elevator, and I don't see anything happening. So I won't be up there, that's for sure. Yes, sir. There's going to have to be a, a relief station somewhere about halfway up. All right, Mitchville's, Mitchville's starting off here uh, pressing full court. Ball over to uh, Candace Brown, and she almost loses possession of the ball. Debbie Smith, gonna, she's going to drive to the hole. She gets it off. Good and Lord. Down to the floor. No contact she goes. and no, no call. That's a charge. Oh, oh God. my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> uh, okay. Folks, I'll say it. We have a, we have a Candace Brown's fourth. That'll put uh, number 10, Harrington, to the line. She just made a free throw a little while ago. To shoot two. <clears throat> well, I hate to see it come down to officials, but I swear, it, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> it's a shooter's bounce and ties the score up 42 all. Well, Hampton's had their chances, <laughs> um, but she got pounded down here with the ball and not a, not a whistle working into place. Second shot to all net as the Mitchville Monarchs have come back and now taken a one point lead over the Crabbers. Candace Brown take it to the basket. And the basket. Nobody, everybody was worried about the inbound pay. She got the ball and just took it down the court. Great that was job. on Richardson, her first. That's exactly what she should have done. This, she's take been it to the doing that the whole game, but she's been getting herself too far underneath the basket. This time she did a good job. Now, it's going, Hampton's coming in with speed and getting out, getting away from a rebounder. Ashley Benston now in the lineup for the Coming Crabbers. in with defense. Yeah. Candace Brown will shoot but one. But Benfield's got a tall team on that floor. Yeah. Basket right here, gentlemen. Shots up, off. Crabbers have a one-point lead, 44 to 43, as Mitchville just throws the ball away, and the Crabbers will have possession with a minute and 17 and to go. And if you foul the Crabbers, they're they're on the one and one. Yep. But I have to tell you, he came back in with 25, and she's had trouble at the free throw line. Uh, Coach timeout, Webb Mitchville. has called timeout. So Mitchville calls timeout with a minute and 17 to go. The Crabbers will have the ball, inbounding it uh, uh, in at the back. In the corner. In the corner. In the corner. Well, this is what we thought it would be, folks. I mean, these teams have played each other tooth and nail all year long. Three games this year they've already played. Twice, Minchville won during the regular season, both times by three points. Crabbers won by double figures in a playoff game for the number one seed. So this is pretty much what we expected. 
Of course, both of these teams will host, uh, I think it's going to be Monday night. Correct. Uh, on this side, the number three and four teams from whichever district we end up playing. I'm not sure which one it's going to be yet. Is well, the, the Hampton, is, I mean, uh, Churchland, so it's the Southeastern. So okay. Because Churchland plays at uh, Phoebus. Phoebus. Okay. So it's the Southeastern. District that we're going to Yeah, get. so the number one seed, which is going to be Hampton because they won it. Won the, uh, the uh, regular season. They, they will, will host, host the game at the Hampton number Monday. Four team right. out of the southeast. There's Mr. Sapp here coming in, a loyal Kikatan uh, coach. And, uh, <laughs> Mr. Sapp, it looks like he's got a halo, but he just got whiter hair than he used to have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Minute and 17 as the clock is running down now as we're. But we're in a man. We're in a uh, situation now where the Crabbers have to maintain possession of the ball. Or score one of the two. Debbie Smith is really working hard underneath there, trying to get open. That's his ball back off to uh, Kanita Sears. Candace Brown with the ball. See, she's going. She's got to give it up. She's got to give it up. And Eric Scott calls it. a timeout because, because she was going to get a five seconds. That's second exactly right. That's understand a smart call. now. Once she started dribbling, the five, five second count started again. So you stand there and hold the ball. You got five seconds. So once you start dribbling, you got a new I, five I, seconds. That's then, what I, but I thought she was dribbling the ball during no, the count. But no, she wasn't. She was holding the ball while he was okay. counting. Then he started the dribble. Okay. But I think Scott was is smart because he's thinking. Maybe he doesn't know that. 41.1 <laughs> one seconds to go That's here. Regulation is 44 to 43. So what you're saying, that was front. a defensive call by the coach. <laughs> He's done a great job calling yes, he, defense tonight. Yeah, yes, he has. We'll see how. I we'll see how Benchville sets up defensively now as the Crabbers will inbound. They got to go man to man. They got to go man to man. Yeah. And you got to put. Play people underneath the basket. You got to spread out that defense. Like they're uh, double team. They're not covering the inbounder. They come in here with a double team. Take it to the hole, Debbie. All the way in. Oh, she hit it too hard. Travers get the ball back. Down to 28 seconds. That's an oh. intentional foul right there, gentlemen. Well, but no, she was. She it. was reaching for the ball. Reaching okay. for the ball. Yeah, she was. And that'll put. Uh, that should put Kanita Sears to the line to shoot one and one here. Any more fouls after this, though, and the Crabbers will be shooting two. So this big one. This first big one's field, big. Big uh, free throws here. Got to get that first one, Grant. We yep. talked about that last this is time. big. Nice Up shot. the net. Good play. But even if she makes this second one, it's still a one possession game. And That's you got, correct. you got 30, 25 seconds to go here. Anything can happen. A lot of game left. Sears will attempt to make it two here. And then uh, right now they have a two point lead, 45 43. Nice shot. Nice both. shot. Crabbers by three with uh, 25 seconds left. Somebody's got to get back. So she's, uh, she, he's going offense, defense. Right. Going to the bench is the, is the uh, center, Gashir Brown. Coach is telling him to get back. Don't let her shoot the three now. And they let her shoot the three. And Off fouled the him. board, the uh, Crabbers get the rebound and a foul underneath by number 23, Gashir wow. Boone. And I, it's a two shot, two shot foul. I didn't see if she got knocked down over here or not. I couldn't see that. She just fell. Okay. She just fell. I just saw her movement to the ground. She, she would have got an Oscar. Well, Mike turned his head, and I couldn't see that for him. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's bad. <laughs> Going to the line now to shoot two is, is Ashley Benson. Uh, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. He kicks it to four. You got to just you take it to four, and you kind of wrapped it up. These are big right here, folks. Right. Need one of these. Need one of these. Three point crabber lead, 46 you know, to 43. If they're going down, and let's let some so let yep. some time go off the clock, and you can foul them, and they're still not shooting. They've only got five team fouls. That one's too hard. So Minchville, oh, that was a carry, and it didn't get called, guys, right in front of us. 
she just palmed that ball right over the top. The official was looking the other way. Five seconds to go to Crabbers with a three-point lead. Minchville will have the ball over by the scorer's table. Now, like you said, Bob, you got a great idea. Right now when the ball comes in, foul somebody. Foul, foul. Yeah, get two seconds off the clock. Yeah. Well, you know, as long as they're not shooting. They can, do, they can foul twice. No, you got no, one no, to give. Just, you got one. Yeah, we got to talk about no. player to get. Yeah, but you got to get to seven fouls yeah, before. Well, one more foul will be six, and second foul will be would be seven. Okay. What do we game. got, player? player oh, there game. ain't no doubt about this oh, one. But, but yeah. Let me say something. Okay. There's no doubt about this. No, we're not doing this. <laughs> that, that's the wrong team there, buddy. No, I already did this one. I was just trying to be friendly to the other one. Well, no, why yeah. would you do that? I mean, that, that's a no-brainer I'm a there. nice guy. Oh, yeah, well, sometimes. <laughs> and and as far as a no-brainer, they got the right guy making the call. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let's go ahead and say it. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no doubt Do about it. it. With Tell 21 points in the game, our player of the game for this uh, for championship. The, for the Hampton City School. Obviously, is Debbie Smith. Debbie Smith. Miss all everything and for the Hampton she's, uh, Nine points was Candace Brown, and she really came on here in the second half. She scored uh, seven points to help out. And, but, but Debbie Smith, it's uh, she, it's been her show uh, tonight. I would let number 10 get yeah, this the ball. I'd let her, let her dribble, and then I'd follow her. Let's see what they do here. Yeah. Let her dribble. Now foul her out before she gets the shot off. Oh, and the Crabbers are going to be the district title. Oh, Hampton has won that? this game by a score of 46 to 43. 46. What a great game, folks. It was everything we talked about. Uh, Hampton came out to start the fourth quarter on fire, and they're, they're – uh, Pressure defense won it for him as the, the uh, Crabbers will take the district crown 46 to 43 over the Minchville Mile. So, so Hampton was co champions in the regular Peninsula District title. Right. And they outrun the uh, tournament out. Right? And they're still, of course, they were number one seed and they will be playing uh, Monday night. Uh, I think it'll be at Phoebus. I think is where they'll be playing. I think the girls' game number one will be played before the boys' game. Well, I know. I know that uh, one of the boys' games is being played at Hampton, so they may end up playing there. They may have two games there. Well, I think I think Kickatan will, Kick will play there because of the seating. Well, let's send it courtside with Eric Scott and uh, Bob Hintz. Bob Hintz. All right. First of all, coach, congratulations. It looked like that they were going to the third quarter that they kind of took over, but you come out the fourth quarter just different mindset you know one of the things that at halftime we make adjustments and the kids are listening to us and, and my coaching staff and they came out and executed what we wanted to do well I, you know you got to be pleased with Debbie Smith my golly she just did she just looked so good at it yes she did she kept attacking and kept attacking and we, and we told her you know she, she probably came to our district as a as a jump shooter but I think she's living our living leaving our um, district as a slasher well, she's done a great job. My question was, when it was five seconds, they got the ball in, they they were dribbling it. You could have fouled. You only had five team fouls. Also, you know what? We told them to foul. And I think they got so nervous, they were, they were afraid to foul in active shooting. So we take it. Well, I tell you, you I'm thinking like a coach over there, but That's you right. did a great and job. Congratulations, thank you. Coach. Thank you. And uh, well, good luck in the district. regional. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's go back over to the guys. All right, let's wrap this up, Mike. Of course, Debbie Smith is our MVP, and you ought to get the T-shirt. And, and with uh, 21 points, you had a heck of a game. Okay, so we'll end it here as the Hampton Crabbers have Make defeated sure the Mitchellville Monarchs 46 to 43 for the district tournament championship. So for Brent Musgrove, Bob Hint, Mike Hauser here. So long from Woodside High School. Hampton girls.